Okay, this is going to be a fun one. We're going to be talking about hash tables and the linear probing technique. To get started, let's recap how open addressing works. So in general, if we have a table of size n, here's how we do open addressing, no matter what your probing function is. So we start our constant, or sorry, variable x at 1, the key hash is just going to be whatever a hash function gives us for our key. And our first index we're going to check is going to be the original hash position. And while the table at the index is not equal to null, meaning that position is already occupied, then we're going to offset the index by where the key hash is plus the probing function mod n. And every time we do this, we increment the variable x so that our probing function pushes us along one extra position. And then once we found a position, then we can insert the key value pair into the table at that position. All right, so what is linear probing? So linear probing is simply a probing method which probes according to some linear formula, specifically the linear function p of x equals a of x plus b, and we have to make sure that a is not equal to zero, otherwise we're just adding a constant which does nothing. Now I have a small note right here which says that the constant b is obsolete. And if you know why, post in the comments and have a discussion with the others. And as we saw in the last video, there's a slight problem with this currently. And it's that some linear functions are unable to produce a full cycle of order n. And we might end up getting stuck in a cycle. Here's an example of that. If we picked our linear function to be p of x equals 3x, and say our key k hashed to 4, and for some reason our table size was 9, then we would end up with the following cycle occurring. Assuming that positions 4, 7, and 1 are already taken by other key value pairs. So the fact that we're only probing at those three locations means we're unable to reach all the other buckets, which is really bad. And hence, we're again stuck in an infinite loop. We cannot get stuck in this situation ever. So how do we avoid it? So that's the question, which values of the constant a in p of x equals a of x produce a full cycle modulo n? It turns out that this happens when the constant a and n, the table size, are relatively prime to each other. So two numbers are relatively prime if their greatest common denominator is equal to 1. So that is a and n have a GCD of 1. And when that happens, the probing function will always be able to generate a complete cycle. And we will always be able to find an empty bucket. Awesome. All right, here's an example with linear probing. So suppose we have an originally empty hash table and we want to insert some key value pairs. And we selected our probing function to be p of x equals 6x and our table size to be n equals 9. And then we also selected a max load factor of alpha equals uh, about 2 thirds and the threshold will then be 6. So we resize once we heat, hit 6 elements. Okay. So based on the probing function we chose and the table size, are we likely to run into an infinite loop while inserting based on what I told you in the last few slides? And the answer is yes. The greatest common denominator of 9 and 6 is equal to 3, which is not 1. So let's go ahead and attempt to insert some elements regardless. We may or may not hit any problems. Okay, so first let's insert, so I guess on the left I have some key value pairs I want to insert, and 
we're going to insert k1 first. So suppose that the hash value for k of 1 is equal to 2. Then we would say, all right, the hash of k1 plus the probing sequence at 0 mod 9 is equal to 2. So we're going to insert that key value pair at position 2. All right, next one. So now suppose k of 2 is equal to 2 again. So we're going to try to insert this key value pair at position 2, but oh snap, we have a hash collision. So we're going to increment x and now try to offset at the probing function at 1 instead of probing function at 0. So that is, instead of inserting it now at 2, we're going to insert it at 8. Alright, so that went in because that slot was free. Now let's try inserting key 3. So key 3, suppose that hashes to 3, then we can insert at position 3 and there's no issue. Now notice that we're trying to reinsert k2, which already exists within our hash table. So instead of inserting it, we're actually going to be updating its value because it exists in the hash table. Alright, so from before we know that the hash value for k2 is 2. So so then we look at position 2, and k2 is not there, and there's a hash collision, so we increment x, offset it by p of 1, and now we're able to find k2, and now we can update the value right there. Let's go to k5. Okay, so suppose uh, k5 has a hash value of 8. So 8 is taken, so we're going to probe and that leads us to index 5, so we're going to insert the key value pair there. Now let's try to insert k6. Suppose k6 hashes to 5, then let's probe uh, 1, so now that, so 5 plus 6 mod 9 gives us 2. Okay, now the hash collision, let's keep probing. So now uh, 5 plus 12 mod 9 is equal to 8. All right, another hash collision, so we have to increment x and keep probing. And now we're back to 5. So we've hit a cycle. All right, so we're trapped in a cycle, but we kind of expected this to happen because we knew that we picked two numbers whose GCD was equal to 3 and not 1. So if we look at all the possible A values we could have selected instead of 6, we see that the ones that give a greatest common denominator of 1 with n the table size are 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8, while any multiple of 3 would give us something else. So this comes to the realization that for our choice of p of x, if we choose p of x to be 1 times x, then the greatest common denominator of n and 1 is always going to be 1, no matter what our choice of the table size is, which is why p of x equals 1 times x is a very popular probing function choice. Alright, now suppose we have another hash table and we wish to insert more key value pairs, but this time we're actually going to pick a probing function that works so that we don't ever have any issues. So I'm going to pick the table size to be 12 and our probing function to be 5x. So no cycle should occur. All right, so let's go with inserting the first guy. So suppose that k1 has a hash value of 10 then at index 10 we had to put k1, v1. Suppose k2 has a hash value of 8, then slot 8 is free, so let's pop those right in there. So I'll now suppose k3 is equal to 10. Oh, hash collision with k1 in there. So we need to keep probing. All right, so if we use our probing function, which is p of x equals 5x, so that will give us 3 modulo n when we add it to the hash value. 
move non insert k4. Now suppose the hash value for k4 is 10, then we have to keep probing. So then we hit k3, which we inserted last time. And then, oh, we also hit k2, but we're able to pull out eventually when we hit the third probing value. However, now notice that we've actually reached the threshold of our table. If I go back a few slides, we can see that I picked alpha to be 0 0.35. So n, which is the table size, times alpha gave us 4. And we just finished inserting the fourth element, so it's time that we resize the table. So how we usually resize the table is via some exponential fashion, such as doubling or tripling or so on. But we need to double in such a way that the GCD of n and a still holds. So after doubling, n is equal to 24, and the GCD property is still good. Uh, alpha is a constant, so it's still 3.5. So our new threshold is just going to be 8, and we don't change the probing function. All right, so let's allocate a new chunk of memory for this new table. And now we need to place all the old elements in our old table into this new table using the new table size for n. All right, so if we scan across all these elements, we start at zero, nothing there, move along. So from before, we knew that the hash value for k4 was 10. So inside the new table, it's going to go up position 10. All right, scan along, nothing here. From before, we know that k3 was 10. So it should go in position 10 in this new table, but we have a hash collision, so we have to keep probing. So if we add our probing function at 1, which is 5x, then we get 10 plus 5, which is 15. So we're going to insert it at position 15 in the new table. Keep probing, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. So eventually we hit k2. So we know from before k2 is equal to 8. Uh, so we're going to insert at position 8. Now we know k1 is equal to 10. So we're going to try and insert at position 10. That's taken, so we have to probe. So the next position is also taken. So add 5 again. That gives us 20. So we're going to insert k1, v1 at 20. All right. So now we throw away the old table and we keep this new table. And this is the new hash table we're working with. And we were at inserting k5. Now suppose k5 is equal to 2. And that spot is free. So we are good. So here's a frequently asked question. Sweet. I know how insertion works. Now how do I remove key value pairs from the hash table using open addressing? And my answer to this is that this topic is going to merit its own video. And we're going to do it after we see all the other open addressing techniques because it's actually non-trivial. All right. So guys, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe and drop a comment. See you later.